Hello, and welcome to Talk From Superheroes. Hey, everybody, I'm Andrew Ivamy. And I'm Diana McCollum. And this is Talk From Superheroes, where every week we discuss a piece of superhero television or film. And this week on the podcast, we were talking about the heroic property. We were talking about Uncharted. They have no charts. They're all out of charts. If you've got a single chart to give... They're going to burn it to the ground. These fuckers are done... They they wildly do have a considerable have, number of charts in this film. I think there's, you know what? It's spoiler free, but still, there's at least three charts. I'm gonna say a minimum of three there charts. There was a minimum in this movie. of three because one of them was double sided. Right. One yeah. of them was like a wide view, and one of them was like a zoomed in view of the same treasure. Yes. So yeah, at least three charts. Yes. And pretty the video pretty games as well, chart heavy. Pretty frankly. explicitly charted as well. Very explicit because because like the video games and the movie are very much like. Someone this was explorer here before. <laughs> charted a map to a treasure. Let's go there. It's charted. It is highly charted. This is huge. You know what? You always get the we've hot goss here broken, when you come to talk from superheroes. We've, we've broken down this franchise. Yeah. I think every one of the billion dollars it made deserves a refund. Just lies. 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 So right many away. charts. Yes. Yes. Uh, but we're talking about Uncharted this week. The movie. The movie. We are going to give you a spoiler-free review. So since this is a new property, as we do when it, we talk about any new TV show or film, we're going to give you a spoiler-free review. Then, once you hear the music, that's when we're going to get into the spoiler-filled section. Uh, and then that, the the taste of charts. That was just a, that was a free spoiler that just right free. off the top. Sorry about that. the fact that there's three charts. No. If you were if you were going in like, well, what I know from the I, title, I hope, no charts. And I, I hate movies with charts. I, I'm so we spoiled that for you. We pulled that band-aid off real quick. Honestly, if you were hoping for no charts, I'm glad you know going in that there's charts. You know what? You're welcome. You're, you're right. You're welcome. At least three charts. Diana, you're right. We we're doing we're doing a good public service here. So we're talking about uncharted today on the podcast just, just to let you know what's coming up uh, next week on the podcast we're also we're going to be talking about another new release the batman can you believe the batman's already out like that, next week but still that bad boy creeped up on us he'll do that to you yeah, he's like, very shadowy there are you some, can't see him there are trailers for some things coming out this year where i'm like oh yeah that's been delayed like nine times but the batman's like i'm here baby no no hesitation, barreling right forward. The Batman is next week. Uh, and as well, the other episode that we did this month is we did The Legend of Vox Machina. That is a Patreon exclusive available over on our Patreon page, patreon.com slash from superheroes. So if you want to hear us talk about The Legend of Vox Machina, all of season one, which is on Amazon Prime, uh, our episode about that is over on our Patreon page, exclusive to our patrons. So, And if you want to hear about Batman... Out. Check us out next week. And then that'll be next week. But Uncharted, this week, let's start with a, a spoiler-free review, the simple question. Diana, did you like it? I liked it just fine. Um, I would say this movie is probably the most consistently mediocre film I've ever seen. Just across the board, nothing is bad and nothing is great. The, the relationships are just fine. The banter's just fine. The action's just fine. The comedy's just fine. The whatever else is it, the treasure hunting just fine. Nothing sucks and nothing rules. Consistently mediocre. Mm. And uh, that's how I felt about literally everything in the film. Um, so yeah, that's my, that's my quick review of like, if you like just the middle grade of everything, you will might enjoy Uncharted. <laughs> I liked that it was under two hours. I'll give it that. L just slightly under two, about an hour 50, would you take the credits out? So that was a fun time for me. So I will say, yeah, everything real middle ground. Tom Holland's a little bean. He's Peter Parker doing parkour. You can't tell the difference between this character and Peter Parker in any way, shape, or form. But that's a good character. So I had a, I had a fine time. Andrew, did you like Uncharted? I am also of the camp that this is an aggressively fine movie. Ooh, aggressively. Ag I love that. I, I, I think we have covered other movies on the podcast that have been as fine as this. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm struggling to remember what the last one was. This is a type of movie that I feel like it's been a minute since we've discussed on the podcast. It is a folding laundry movie. This Ooh, is it has been a minute. That's a very specific subtype that every once in a while we bring up on the podcast where we're like, if you set aside your evening to watch this, it's not really a good use of your evening. You're going to pull your phone out every now and then. Yeah, it's not an upsetting use of your evening. No. But if you need to fold some laundry and you throw this on in the background, that's not bad. 
It's not like, that's not so it is I agree with you. It is it is fine. It is very by the book popcorn action adventure movie filmmaking. I think that there is one bad thing that just doesn't work and kind of sucks and I think that there's like one really cool fun thing that Ooh. I didn't expect in it. So there's there's one high one low, and everything else just kind of is. The median is middle. Okay. Yeah. 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 I 100% agree. I yeah. can't wait to hear what your high and your low are, actually. I'm a five mm. on everything. Really? Top yeah. to bottom, you're a five Top on it all. Top to bottom, five. And five sounds bad because I think we give, like, sixes to movies that we think are bad. I think six and lower is how we grade a bad movie. Your average, like, on a scale of ten reviewer will be, yeah. like, six and below is a, like, fuck this thing. But I am of the mind that a five is a medium. Right. I use the scale the way it was meant to be used. Mm. I am harsh about it. I think that this is why we don't use numbers on the podcast. I actually like our our very our unofficial. We've never really discussed it on air or off, mm. but our unofficial system of like hated it, didn't like it, fine, liked it, loved it. It's a scale of five that we're operating on for the most part. It's about a five. We've given a lot of high likes that don't make a love. We really hold on to a love. Yeah, a love, a love is you rare, gotta cherish it. But we got a lot of high likes. A lot of high likes, and this 4. is just 5s. this is just fine though. This is just fine. This is just fine. This is an old five out of ten. You're looking to kill an afternoon. You're looking to fold some laundry once this comes out on home video. Whatever it is, I think it's. I it's, think it's like fine. fold laundry. It's do not pause it when you go to the bathroom. Mm. Like you can go to the kitchen and make a snack. Yes. Yeah. And you'll be like, great, I didn't break the energy of anything. Yeah. I just did what I felt like. Yeah. 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 I, I like that. I stand by that. Yeah. I, I love it. Yeah. Do not pause it when you go to the bathroom is a a, a very type of movie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not in a way that you're like, oh, I can't wait for it to be over. But just I'm like, I'm not going to miss anything. You're like, no. no. But I, <laughs> I'll figure it out. But I, yeah. But I am <laughs> like, I will be slightly curious when I come back from the bathroom. I'm going to listen from the bathroom? Yeah. Yeah. yeah That's what yeah, I'd do yeah, yeah, yeah. if, if yeah. this movie was like, well, I'll watch it. Home. Most definitely. Most definitely. <laughs> okay. And can it be spoiled? Nah. We didn't even need this section. Uh, I mean, I would say that there is at least one thing that I did not see, the trailers did not give away, and I didn't expect. Uh, I would say that there's one thing that caught me off guard, but for the most part, if you have ever seen an adventurer movie or played any of the video games, it's that. You know, there's a map that leads to a place. Was that the place or did that place have a second map that takes you? And it's just the same series of events that every an Indiana Jones, a national treasure, any kind of a Lara adventurer, a, your Lara Croft, any adventurer explorer movie has all of, oh no, us and the bad guys arrived at the gold at the same time. It's the exact same beats other than one uh, moment that I think is a little spoily. Oh, okay. I can't wait yeah. to hear what that is. Yeah. I want to just throw out some moments and be like, is that it? But then that, but we can't <laughs> do that here. We section, can't do that. So here. When we get to the next section, I'll throw some stuff at you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But for the most part, it's also a fine movie. So even if you had this one thing spoiled for you, I think it's still just going to be. You might have missed it when you went to the bathroom. The same quality of uh, of a movie. <laughs> but that is it for I think uh, our spoiler free review. Now let's get into into details. We'll talk about the one thing that I think is a spoiler that uh, Diana has either forgotten or doesn't think of as a spoiler. But we'll get into that now in our spoiler filled section. Let's talk about Uncharted. With charts. All right. We have seen Uncharted. We've seen the charts. We've, we've seen, seen them all. We've seen everything. It was Uncharted when we hadn't seen the charts. Yes. Now it's been charted. This is the spoiler-filled section. Andrew, hit me with a spoiler. I gotta know. I can't wait. So Di- Diana just wants this off the top. This isn't typically the norm- normal order we discuss movies in. It's the death of Antonio Banderas. Oh, I guess. It was just like, who cared? <laughs> I I actually liked that as a plot point. Oh, okay. I mean, uh, like, I didn't. It was a five. I, I didn't like or dislike it. But, mm, okay. Like, yeah. is he a video game character? Should I have cared? Um, I don't even think it's a video game thing. We'll talk about the video game ness okay. of it all in in just a second. We can kind of get into that. But I think just from a marketing a film perspective, it's like mm-hmm. Antonio Banderas is the baddie. He's the bad guy. He is the baddie. And maybe he's going to die at the very very end. But to do this 
this switch to be like it to be like the legacy the uh, the legacy actor that we put in all of our press and media and we're like check out this named guy who is the big villain actually isn't the villain and we're actually rolling hard on this character like that I think was a smart thing to do. Okay, I uh, Braddock was the the Braddock was the, the villain uh, who killed him. Yeah, played by Tati Gabrielle. Um. I will disagree on it being the smart thing to do. I guess it was kind of surprising. I also feel like I'm used to like the really big name actor in these movies not having that big a role. Mm. Like even if like 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 if it's like oh it's Tom Holland's new thing but we hired like a big A list celebrity but I'm like they're only gonna be in like two scenes. Right. So I wasn't I don't yeah, I wasn't that surprised but I get I get what you're saying even that if, like you expect him to even live. if they're only in two scenes yeah you don't expect them to get their throat slit and be usurped as the villain of the movie before uh, the third act before the third act and I think that that was that was a fun twist you know that is something that like a lot of other properties have like talked about doing or wanting to do or have done with heroes or like that kind of like mislead rug pull and I think it actually really works for the world of like villainy and backstabbing and betrayal. I thought that that was a, a, a good turn. I really liked that. Okay. We will be in disagreement on that then. That's actually one of my biggest changes that doesn't happen because I don't think Braddock's a very good villain. Like ah. I get the idea. The idea is actually kind of cool. Like kind of a psycho-esque, like your, your main guy dies early and you're like, what's the rest of this movie about? Right. On paper, I actually think that totally works and can be really good for like a usurping henchman or second in command who's been belittled. But I didn't think Braddock was especially interesting or cool, and I liked Antonio Banderas better, so I'm not going to support it in this particular movie, but I like mm. the idea. I, I I agree with you on premise there, but I think that that's why it works, personally, is that I think that Banderas, Banderas' uh, character, uh, Victor... Uh, nope, nope. Moncada. Uh, uh, Moncada. 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 Um, uh, Moncada's character is the one with story. Like, I agree. Uh, Braddock has no story, no character. I don't know what her motivations are other than the obvious one, which is gold. Money, is money, money. Gold is, gold is money. I like money. Uh, Moncada has, like, a backstory, a parental figure, a, like, a history. There is, there's three dimensions to his character, whereas Braddock doesn't have that. But it's a movie that doesn't need three dimensions from the villain. Like, once it gets into the third act, it's just like... We've got a fucking flying ship full of gold. <laughs> Who gives a shit what Antonio Banderas' relationship with his father was? We just need someone, a, a look cool action star, and it's Braddock. And I agree with you, the character is nothing, uh, but I think uh, this, this actress is a better action star and just looks cool, and that's really all you need as a placeholder villain for the end when you're just physically fighting for gold. She does look pretty cool. Um, this is actually going to be like my big change, so I'm not going to say what I want to say right now. Mm -hmm. um, but it's Antonio Banderas based. Okay. So well, I will. I will not. I will still not support this. But I like that you liked it. I am. I'm. I'm changed for you. Well, let's let's scale it back then. So this was the spoiler. You wanted to get into I that. I did right want to know. Thank you for telling me. I didn't want to wait. So let's take a step back and talk about our adventurers and our beans and uh, some other aspects of the movie. Some other aspects of the movie. Um, not to be too negative right off the top, I will say I could not stand that this movie started out with, I bet you're wondering how I got myself here, <laughs> falling from the boxes out of the cargo plane. I can't state enough that a movie is not a YouTube trailer. Like, I paid yeah. to see this whole film. Well, I, was gonna, gonna... I was going to stay the whole time. I gave you my $18. I was gonna watch the whole movie. You don't have to put, you know, the little bit of the trailer before the trailer starts, like in the YouTube trailer videos. Like, it's so dumb. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. And here's how I know definitively. I could see the seams that this was done last minute as a panic move. Oh, okay. Uh, and I, I agree with you. It's dumb. I don't like it as a structure. If it wasn't like that, I think that this movie does have some pacing issues mm -hmm. in the sense that. That big scene, which uh, listeners, if you haven't seen the movie, you saw it in trailers. You might have played it in the video game when he is hanging on to a cargo net by his ankle, which is dangling out of a plane. Uh, it's this big action set piece. That happens like an hour 40 into the movie. And then there's another, I think, really fun plane ship fight set piece like 15 minutes after that. But I think the two biggest... Uh, most like vibrant, colorful, fun, gigantic action set pieces 
are right after one another in the final act of the movie, and the pacing is bad, and it's too late. So I see why they panicked, and they moved a clip of it to the beginning of the movie, even though it doesn't work. And how I know they did it last minute is because they show this clip. The movie starts with, it is it is Tom Holland as, as Nathan Drake, and he's hanging from the plane. It's like, oh, how did I get here? And then it cuts to like 15 years ago, and he's a kid in boarding school or whatever. Mm-hmm. Then it cuts to what the card says, present day. Mm. And he's on the subway in New York, and he hasn't been recruited to be an adventurer yet. But that's not present day, because I've seen, us as an audience, have seen a thing further forward in time, which would imply that's present day. So really, it should be 15 years ago, and then a card that says six months earlier, or whatever period of time they want to imply has passed during training and prep. But the fact that it says 15 years earlier and present day tells me that the movie was produced, edited, put they put the cards in, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, they test screened mm-hmm. it, and they were like, there's no action off the top, shove a clip from later in the movie at the beginning, and no one ever went in and changed the timestamps that show up on the screen. I get what you're saying, because yes, that would imply that we're seeing the future when we see the plane, which is true, I guess, but it's all the future. Yeah, like in that time way. is nothing time in a film. Tame. We are the audience. It's all happening at once. It's all happening but. at once. And I will also say it doesn't really line up, especially when you find out how he survives the fall, because it cuts to him and his brother grabs his hand so he doesn't fall off a roof 15 years ago. But then we see him survive the fall because he lands on the pl- he lands on the car, and then the girl opens the door of the car. She doesn't grab his hand. She does. She reaches out the window and grabs his hand. Did she? Okay, I yeah. remember him landing on the roof. The car hits him. He spins out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then as he's passing by, she grabs his hand and he pulls himself onto the roof. Oh, okay. I, I that actually part. think it was well edited. I will give them. Okay. That. All right. Fair. Fair enough. But yeah, the the present day thing doesn't make sense. It doesn't. It kind of even ruins the cargo scene later. You're like, I guess that's coming up. Like, it has no stakes when you've just opened there. Like, you don't know uh, Nate yet. You don't know what's going on. Yeah, so definitely, definitely didn't care for the, uh, I, I bet you're wondering how I got myself here. Like, like we were all going to leave the theater and demand our money back if we didn't get to the cargo net scene immediately. <laughs> Although, even with a taste of cargo net scene, this movie, I was like, this is fine, until about an hour in, and I was like, I am getting drained. Like, this is crawling. I actually didn't find it draining. Really? I was at at the exact same level of excitement the whole movie, because I actually didn't find the cargo thing in the plane particularly exciting. Um, maybe because it was in the trailers too much. Like maybe. it didn't it didn't rocket my heart race any any higher than other stuff had. You're very right. The flying ships was super fun. That was that, that was, was my the only high. one. When I mentioned in the like, spoiler free review, I'm like, there's one high. I'm like, that is such a fun design concept. And it is the embodiment of the energy that this movie should have throughout, which is like, we're a fun adventurer movie, but also kind of stupid and who gives a fuck we're like a couple of idiots yeah that was the first time yeah. i felt like they were idiots yeah and i i really wish they leaned into that more you're right it was it was very fun they're just bantering over the over the comms while he's flying up a, a helicopter that's flying a giant ship it's that's hitting other ships and shooting cannonballs like that was very very fun that was an incredible sequence um so yeah that there is a high there the 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 plane didn't. The plane actually seemed like it looked better in the trailer. I don't know what was going on. It just didn't seem very exciting. I didn't think he was gonna fall. I didn't. Feel the, any I didn't. Tension. I didn't love the camera work that they did yeah. necessarily. I it actually didn't, didn't quite work. Love a lot of the camera work, even in the mm. the planes in the helicopter part. I was right. like, the choreography is hard to follow, but I think it was choreographed well. But it was filmed very poorly. Was the impression I got with the choreography? Because I'm like, Tom Holland's doing his little flips and his parkour, and he's good at those, and they look like they look nice, but the camera's just flying around too much to get a sense of of how choreographed it is and how cool it is. Yeah. Yeah, like at some points they would just cut back, and Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg have switched swords, and I'm like, when did... I didn't see when, when did you... That and they're happen? making a joke about it. I'm like, I couldn't even follow... When you switched your swords. Yeah, I, I agree. There are a lot of like just like random continuity errors where I was just like, all right, whatever. You switch swords and now you're making a joke about it. 
I didn't see it. The camera didn't show it. That's weird. Uh, you know, there's just a like backpacks just disappear and reappear at Ooh, will throughout the movie, are and that drives me fucking nuts. But whatever, who cares? You didn't think where the backpacks were or whatever. But yeah, like some weird inconsistent camera work and cutaways that don't necessarily add up. And yeah, well, yeah, you're right. We only had backpacks when we needed backpacks. Like suddenly it's like, I need both the crosses. Give me that backpack that you definitely had in the three scenes before this. I'm like, did they though? Yeah, there's... Did you have the crosses the whole time? The scene when they're running through like ca the, the catacombs that leads into a nightclub and then uh, uh, Nathan and... Um, uh, Chloe? Uh, Chloe, yes. Nathan and Chloe. Uh, Chloe's like, we need to blend in. And they just abandoned their coats and backpack. But their the crosses that were the keys were in the backpack. Then they get into a different room after escaping a fire. No jackets, no backpack. They are just in a t-shirt and jeans. But they have the keys somehow. Mm -hmm. And then they get out of that puzzle. And then Chloe has a gun. And she's wearing her jacket. And I'm like, <laughs> where did you get a gun and a jacket? You drowned in a t-shirt one minute ago. One and minute have, ago. You they have their cell phones. They have a gun. They have crosses. No pockets. No nothing. No ba backpacks. Yes. Nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, But also, it's like, this movie's fine. So who cares? Who Whatever. Cares? Magic backpacks. Yeah. What you gonna do? Now, wh why I think that the the scenes like I, I agree with you that the camera work doesn't necessarily sell it, but the the airplane scene at least is a big set piece. It's an attempt at something. The the ship battle at, at the end where it is. Uh, so for those of you who didn't see it, like there's two cargo helicopters that are pulling out two ships. Filled with buried treasure. Two like pirate ships. Pirate Two ships. Two giant old, old pirate ships. ships full of gold. And Sully takes over one helicopter while people on the ships hanging below are fighting one another. And it's just a really fun set piece. But I think that those two right at the end are the only like bright, colorful, bombastic set pieces. And not to get like too deep into the video game, but we, I actually, you know what? I don't even need the video game because I think every treasure hunting movie, you're Indiana Jones or whatever... It is based on traveling around the world and these big bombastic set pieces. And up until that point in the movie, and at that point we're like an hour 30, hour 40 into the movie, I'm like, I have seen such incredible sets as Bar, a Papa John's, an indescript <laughs> sewer. There is no... They weren't. They actually have an entire fight scene in a Papa John's, you guys. But like, like an... Like an artistic Papa John's that still it's, has old, like, Yeah, not legally a Papa old... John's, but... No, he said Papa John's. He said Papa John's, yeah. it's But it's just funny because it is the least visually glamorous and stunning mm -hmm. globe-trotting adventurer movie. You know, like, like, I get what you're saying. Yeah, the the big the big ship scene is like you can see the the ocean and you're over jungles and the beach and it's beautiful and it's bright. Um, they didn't really make it work. There is a foot chase between Tom Holland and Chloe that's like going all through Barcelona that could have been really stunning, but it was really just a couple rooftops. It was just indescript rooftops and, and some fountain. shaky cameras around a fountain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I I agree. They didn't space out kind of. I think the 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 extremity of the action scenes enough because I will say actually more than the ships, a sequence I liked actually is the underground catacombs. Cause that is very like treasure huntery. There's like five puzzles in a row. Mm -hmm. Mark Wahlberg has to do a thing at the same time. They're doing a thing, even though they're like far away from each other, they're running away from villains they're solving clues on the fly. I actually really like that whole sequence but it feels like it should be way later in the movie. Like, it felt like I felt like they were going to find the treasure. I'm like, you've been mm. through like 18 clues. You've been fight, running from these guys for like 20 minutes. I really enjoyed this whole sequence, but it felt like it was going to be like the end. And then we have like all of these outdoor ones later where it could have been like an outdoor one, catacombs, then the big ship. It would have worked better if it was the plane fall then yeah. the catacombs, yeah, then the big shit, yeah, mm -hmm. okay, I, I fully agree with this that. This is what I'm saying. The, and this is what I'm saying, that like, the pacing of the movie is the wrong. Pacing the middle is felt off. weird and sleepy for I me. feel like they gave us a, a, a hint of that, because we said the exact same thing about the trailer. Like, this trailer is weirdly paced and doesn't quite work, but still looks like it might be okay. Mm. The trailer gave us all the clues. But also sometimes trailers are just edited poorly, and that's, you they know, are. that's but hard to case, gauge. And it they, was true. It was correct. It was absolutely true.
Yeah, I uh, yeah, the pacing of it was a little bit off. But the catacombs thing, I can see what you're saying. That there is a tension there. There is, but it was too early in the movie. I'm like, you're not going to find it. You're going to have a moment of disappointment and betrayal, and then mm-hmm. have to go to to another location. But it wasn't until that third act, once uh, Tom Holland is driving a boat on these beautiful blue waters, where I was like, oh, now we're a globe trotting adventure movie. Like now this is a now this is a James Bond. Now this is an Indiana Jones. Now this is any movie like this that has. 19 exotic locales. Yeah, that was the first time it felt like, oh, we have left America. Like, you didn't film this on a soundstage or, like, off the coast of Vancouver. Like, you actually went yeah. somewhere tropical. It was the first shot that you're like, oh, you're, you've gone somewhere. And even, like, this movie did, didn't have a small budget. Like, this no. movie has a considerable budget. But I would say even like the Barcelona thing. Uh, I believe it was Barcelona when I they're think in they the go to Barcelona. They're, For the churches in Barcelona. Yeah, so they're, they're in a church. So they show up to this big, grand church during the daytime. Mm -hmm. And Chloe kind of like walks up to one of the nuns and is like, we need to get in and have a poke around. She's like, there's a big midnight mass tonight. So we'll come back tomorrow. (laughs) So instead of this like big, big, whereas like any other movie like that does exotic locales, like it's like James Bond and it's like, we're at the church and we need to get in and look. And also it's the day of the dead celebration and there's incredible costumes and set pieces and fireworks and a million extras and things are fucking nuts. And they show up and they're like, something is going on right now. They're having a big mass and we need to get in and sneak. So actually the responsible thing to do is come back when there's going to be nothing actually going on. But at one point they cut to like the radio and Mark Wahlberg's on the street. And it's like, is anything weird up there? And there's like, and maybe it's just a regular street performer, but there's a dude in this big bombastic costume, but not, literally nothing and no one else is happening around him. Yeah, what was that dude's deal? And I'm like, why was the, like, is this a holiday? What the fuck's going on with this dude? Why was Venom from the Venom rave in, in Venom 2 mm. just out on the street? It like doesn't make sense. wearing his party gear, giant, eight feet tall, yeah. black and white, scaly dude. So there were opportunities like that where I'm like, other adventure movies would be like, this coincides with a big celebration, mm-hmm. event, a mass, something that from just a visual filmmaking aspect will at least get really nice looking shots that we can use in trailers. And maybe it's not the best plot in the world or the most motivated, but it's going to fucking look good. But this movie, for the most part, it doesn't really look good. No, it doesn't, it doesn't, like, it never looks bad for the most part, except maybe some of the fight scenes, but it never is like, whoa, what a shot. I will say I actually don't mind that there's no giant kind of mass scenes or whatever. This was filmed during COVID. And it Logistically, was Logistically, I understand and it was why it happened. Earlier in the pandemic than right now. It might have been low on vaccines. We don't even know if people are vaccinated yet. Like, so I'm not I'm not mad they didn't go into a crowded indoor church and have a big mass scene. But you can come up with other things. You can have like a Day of the Dead festival is mostly outside, like even in James, even in Spectre. Like that is an outdoor, huge, beautiful locale. Mm. And there is some beautiful shots, like when Antonio Banderas goes to meet his father. And there's this like a church, like a a build, like a corporate building that they've built inside an old church, but it's like super tall. I'm like, what is that building? I'd love to like go explore it or look at it or get some more angles on it. And then they're like, it's super tiny and we're never going to get any closer to it. And we're not going to do anything with this set either. And it seemed to be like a theme that they liked because we also went to like inside his corporate offices, which the lower floors were like excavated old like Roman barracks yeah. and villages. And I'm like, oh, okay. So you're like the old mix with the new but it's just those two scenes where they even showed that and then it never came up again but it was like a cool idea for a minute of like everything about me is is old and new it's modern and it's like my heritage mixed together but as you but even like way before they kill him they drop that yeah it doesn't come up anymore no and and yeah not only do they drop it and when it was around they didn't really do anything with it. It looked interesting, but it never looked beautiful. Mm -hmm. And they never used it for a set piece. Because, like, all those, like, Roman barracks or whatever that are, like, that he's excavating that are beneath his offices, like, what a great place to have a fight scene or, like, a gunfight or an action scene or something. And it's just, like, here it is, and have a look, it's gone. And just, like, 
such a short, short time for us to feast our eyes on it. Yeah, that would be an incredibly fun scene where you have to half no technology, like hack computers, and then you fall into the lower areas and you have to like figure out puzzles from the ancient world. Right. Like that would be really cool if like you have to do both these things to escape this building and some kind of like we're sealing the cross out of here. That would be really fun and cool. Yeah. Because you'd still be indoors and it wouldn't be like huge, but it would be a very interesting action scene of we have to hack computers uh, and like get through security, but also, oh my God, a trap door in the R Roman barracks. You have to know all the, you have to be able to speak Roman to get it open. They didn't speak Roman. <laughs> what did they speak? I don't know. Maybe they spoke Roman. But yeah, I, I agree with you. That that easily could have been a, a fun set piece or something that they could have done something with, you know. Uh, I would say like one positive. I like Tom Holland in this. I, I, I disagree with you what you said earlier. I think it's actually different enough from Peter Parker I think he's found kind of a place where this exists on its own, and it's it's different from the video games, but he made it its own, and I think it's different from Peter Parker, and I like him in the role. I love Tom Holland. I hope people didn't take that that I think Tom Holland is not good. He's very good. He's he's good in this. He's not given as much to work with as he is as Peter. Like, the banter is lower level. The writing isn't quite there as, like, as funny and as humorous, but he's still quite charming. I think... Oh, what... And he's, and it's, I guess I just don't believe that he's some of the things he does because he does still come off too petery and pure. Like his intro being robbing a woman mm. was so weird to me. That just rang so untrue and unlikable that he would like, he was like, I am going to rob this perfectly nice woman who did nothing wrong. Sure. And is just drinking alone and probably doesn't want to be taken advantage of. I've drank alone at a bar. I'd be really upset if someone robbed me. It's a very cruel thing to do. I don't care how rich she was. So they didn't make her a jerk. They didn't make her entitled and mean. He just robbed a lady. He did He did His just start age. by robbing a lady. And I just, I, I didn't care for it, And I, but I didn't believe it either. I didn't feel like Tom Holland as this character or Peter Parker would do it. And it threw me off through like for like a half hour. I was like, okay. I don't know who this character is right now. Mm. Does he like treasure? Or is he poor? Does he just like to steal? What are your skills? What are your goals? None of this is established. You're very good at bartending. Yeah. The bartending was cute. He was he he really learned how to bartend. He knew he knew how the fuck to do it. He uh, was cocktailing the hell out of those bottles. He knew how to do it enough that I think they rewrote the second bar scene to let him do it again. Ooh, that makes sense. There is no way that the writers of this movie were like, we are going to do two different bar scenes where you have to do like cocktail fl like flipping bottles and stuff like that until Tom Holland showed up and was like, I can actually do all of this. And it was like, all right, write it into another scene. We can't just we can't waste just the use skill that, that he learned. That was very, very cool. Very impressive. Yeah, I think Tom Holland's good. I think some of the writing led me astray of enjoying his character. Like, if the woman had been mean or if, right. like, it was some shitty boyfriend and he was, like, just taking someone's wallet or watch, but just a perfectly nice lady drinking alone, that's not right. That's a terrible setup. <laughs> yeah, it does... It's bad writing. It, it starts with him robbing. He doesn't necessarily have motivations. And I, I can kind of unpack that now uh, Unpack that now in a second. But Tom Holland's performance, though, Tom I will Holland's say outside of the writing, I think that he has found a place where he, he carries himself differently as this character than he does as Peter Parker. And I know that that's kind of hard to dissociate with Tom Holland just being, like, so recognizable uh, as I, I guess a lot of actors are, but even just, like, in his posture, his body type, like, it's just a very a unique everything. But I still feel like he stands up straighter. He's got a different posture. He's got a different movement, a tonality, just the way he speaks to people. It does feel like he has found a unique place where this character exists in, in entirely outside of where his performance of Peter Parker exists. I can agree with that physicality, actually. I, I think it's subtle, but I like what you're saying. Like, he is... He is more confident, especially because he doesn't have to hide who he is like Peter Parker does. He is like, I'm a guy who works out, I'm strong, and I like I move kind of more with more purpose. Yes. Like Peter Parker is very frenetic and he's like, ah, this guy is not frenetic. Nate is like, you know, he might be bantery, 
but he is like, I know where I'm going to move. I know what I'm going to do. I know who I am. I'm confident. I stand taller. I never am hiding who I am the way Peter is hiding that he's Spider-Man sometimes. Mm. So yeah, I can, I can definitely see the difference in physicality. You're right. Yeah, so I think Tom, I think Tom Holland does figure out a performance for this, but I agree with you. The writing does not support Tom Holland has figured out this character more than the writing has figured out this character, which is really really hard to do with bad writing. So like, mm. kudos to Tom Holland. You've you elevated the movie more than it deserved. And I think part of it might be the fact that Tom Holland is someone who actually plays video games. So even though the movie writing does not necessarily give this character what it needs, I believe that Tom Holland is someone who has played all of the Uncharted games and knows who this character is, even though the movie didn't necessarily get it right, that he's just like, oh yeah, no, I have hundreds of hours of source material of who this guy is, and I brought that onto set when the script writer didn't bring that into this film. That is... Such a good analysis of why he would work because the scriptwriter's probably some like 50 year old and then Gen Z Tom Holland who's played all the games is like, well, actually, you know what? Nate's more like this. Yeah. I know where Nate's coming from. I know what motivates this guy. Yeah, like, there is there is no world in which Mark Wahlberg played the Uncharted video games to figure out Sully. No, like, he did not. He maybe had a relative or friend give him a brief explanation of the games or watched a YouTube video, but there's no scenario. But Tom, I think saw what what that character was in the games and kind of brought his version of that to the movie. I would absolutely believe that. Because, yeah, he is one of the only stars that I know for a fact knows how to use, like, modern technology and everything. What's the what's the video that he... he the Watch Mojo. Watch Mojo. Okay, it's so funny. He's doing an interview for Spider-Man and the woman coming in to interview him and he's, like, is, like, doing a press junket and, and, he, and they're, like, I guess they've just been told where she's from. And she's like, watch Mojo. And he's like, I love Watch Mojo. And he's, she's like, I do the voice of Watch Mojo. And she's like, oh my God. And he freaks out. That's how much he loves Watch Mojo. Because he did an impression of her in front of her, not realizing it was her. Yeah. He was like, I love the Watch Mojo videos. Like, you are now watching Watch Mojo. She's like, I'm Watch Mojo. And like, they immediately bought, it's really cute and adorable. But I'm like, you're a dude who watches YouTube videos on your phone while on set. Mm -hmm. You're, you're in touch. You know what's you're going on. You play Uncharted on your off time. You're doing a great job. Yeah. You're like, having fun. Like, I've seen interviews where he, like, has talked in depth about the story beats of the Spider-Man video game on PlayStation. Because he's like, I played it beginning oh. to end. He's like, I think that's really great and a good, and, like, he, th he wasn't told what the story beats were. He sincerely, I believe, on his free time, played beginning to end the Spider-Man video game. Absolutely believable. I mean, he is Spider-Man, so he would, but if you're playing the entire Spider-Man game, you're also playing other games. Mm. If maybe, maybe you, everyone would play a little bit of Spider-Man if they also were the actor who played Spider-Man. But you don't <laughs> finish Spider-Man unless you're also a guy who, who plays video games. Yeah. Now, this kind of brings me to my my bigger low for the movie. Oh, excellent. Is that uh, I think Tom Holland's great. There's a lot of fun. I, I love the, the pirate set piece. My low is Mark Wahlberg as Sully. Mm. It is a low not only because, like, the performance isn't really anything. He's not the right actor for the job. It's also a low for me because I think he's the lead character of this movie, and that fucking sucks. It's really shitty and boring that he's the lead character of this movie because he's not likable, even less so, I think, than Nathan Drake. Like, Nathan Drake is a very re a very passive protagonist mm -hmm. for this movie. When we meet him as an adult, he is stealing as a bartender, and he has no, he's like, I hope I see my brother again someday, but has no other hopes or ambitions or, he's or not, ideals or sense of adventure or wonder. He's not looking for his brother. He's not trying to go on treasure hunts. He doesn't seem to be actively looking up treasure hunt stuff anymore. He, as far as we know, he just bartends. He has just fallen into a comfortable day-to-day -day life with no further aspirations. Mm -hmm. And he ends the movie kind of in the exact same place he began. Like, he's not bartending, obviously, but I still feel like he's just kind of like going where Sully offers him the option to go. He's not like, I love adventure. I'm continuing the spirit of my brother. I think he's just a dude who's like, I don't know, where are we going today, Sully? Sully's got good ideas. Which is all he ever was. And Sully is the character who actually goes on an arc. He starts mm. as the guy who doesn't, who didn't stop to save Sam Drake and was like, yeah, I care more about gold than people. And by the end of the movie, he's changed and he decides to care more about a person than gold because that's the true value. 
Sully's learned a lesson and has had a character arc, and Nathan has just been around. And it really feels like, I'm like, I don't know if this was a Mark Wahlberg thing or what, but it's really dull and boring, and I don't fucking like it at all. Um, I'm 50-50 on this. I agree that Mark Wahlberg has an arc and Nate doesn't, and that's fucking weird. Because Nate is the main character. He's like, and he's got so many things he could have arcs about, like arcs about trusting people, arcs about not trusting people, abandonment issues, finding his brother, getting revenge for his brother. He gets revenge for his brother, I guess, who doesn't even end up being dead. So. But that was never his goal? No. Well, like He was kind of like, if I can get revenge on the way, I will, but it's not... It's not my goal goal. So yeah, he does not go on an arc. Um, I'm, I think it's a little not so shitty because um, Tom Holland has way more screen time. I honestly don't think he does. I think he does because he enters he he enters the movie first. Uh, Mark Wahlberg disappears on the plane for, after he jumps off the plane for forever. I, I think those two scenes where Wahlberg's gone are the only ones he's like not really in the movie. I feel like he's always there. He's always there, but like, you know, Tom Holland's in the underground catacomb and Mark Wahlberg's not doing that much up, Fair. up, up Fair. above. I think, I think Tom Holland is in this quite a bit more than Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg's still in it a lot. Too much. <laughs> um, I don't think he's that bad. I don't think he's great, which is annoying because Tom Holland's very good. And usually Mark Wahlberg's a better actor than this and, like, more fun. I'm like, why can't you banter and have fun with Tom Holland? Because Tom Holland seems to be working really hard. Yeah, yeah. And Mark Wahlberg's just, like, got, like, no energy and no bantery, like, qualities. It almost feels like... He, it's it, like he's fighting it. Like, he doesn't want to be there. Fighting it, I think, is, the great, is, is a, a great way to describe it because it feels like, and I have no reason to, to explain this other than the fact that Mark Wahlberg is historically just a dick. He is a dick. Yep, uh, yep, yep, he's, yep. he's a dick. And Another just, reason for him not to want to be the lead. Yeah, a dick and shitty person to work with by all, all experiences. But that it just feels like Mark Wahlberg doesn't want to be the butt of the joke. And Sully should be that. And there are like little tiny moments where a young Nathan Drake, and from its interpretation of the video games, this is a younger interpretation of both of these characters. But Sully is still the kind of grumpy, out of touch old one. He is version one of what Nathan Drake is version 2.0 of, is kind of the idea that it's like, I'm the grump who flies a plane and you know how to use a phone and you have a back that is better than me and better <laughs> grip strength for climbing. Like you have a function, you have a younger, more functional body. I fly the plane. That's kind of their relationship. And once in a while they have those little lines where like Nathan's like, why do you have so many apps left open? Like this, like I'm a com competent young person with technology and you're old and you didn't know that all these apps were open in the background of your phone. And those jokes work, but it feels like Mark Wahlberg doesn't like or want to take part in the I'm old. Like, he's very much an actor and character who's like, I'm young and cool. No one yes. fucking say yes. I'm not young and cool, all right? I get up at 4 a.m. and I do six hours in the gym every day, so I look 20. And if anyone says I'm not 20, I will fucking kill you. Like, Mark Wahlberg just very much has that energy of, like, no one make fun of me. No one say I'm old. I'm not the butt of the joke visually. I'm young and cool. I absolutely agree with this. And that I think you really nailed of what he is fighting in this. Because my only thought was, did he start filming this and realize it's pretty close to the Italian job where he's also trying, trying to steal a bunch of gold, but he already <laughs> signed on. So mm. he couldn't leave now. But he's like, fuck, it's just like the Italian job. It's a movie I already did. Um, but I think yours makes way more sense because there's even specific lines where you're like, what a weird delivery where like Tom Holland runs after Chloe and then Mark Wahlberg runs after him and they both catch up with her at the same moment, which doesn't make any sense because then Mark Wahlberg says, I have a bad ankle. I yeah. can't run as fast. I'm like, you both just went equally fast. Like Mark Wahlberg didn't take a shortcut. Right. They both went the same distance at the same speed, but clearly the script said Mark Wahlberg can't keep up. And on the shooting day, he was like, oh, absolutely I can. We'll make the line not make any sense. Right. And even the fact that he is an active participant in the fight scenes. Yes. Like in the in the video game, Sully is an older character, but he is someone who would be like firing the gun from the mm -hmm. plane. He is not doing a judo move, but like Mark Wahlberg is definitely a guy who's like, well, I gotta do my judo moves. Like I work out all the time. I'm prepared for it. I'm I, I can be an action I'm an action hero. And I'm the lead actor. He even has a line that's like, I got a bad ankle, which is what he says when he's too slow. And he says it in a way 
say that he actually genuinely convinced me it was like like a military old wound. Like he'd been shot in the ankle. Not that he's just old and has a bad ankle. Like he, the way he said it convinced me. I'm like, oh, so like he broke it in a fight or something. Like he's mm. a young man who's just got a lingering fight injury. But like old people just have bad ankles. He's 51. I'm just going to let y'all know. Mm -hmm. He's 51. And that's the other thing too, is that obviously it has to do with past adventures. But, but in the... In the first scene when they're at the auction, I'm like, is he implying that he's had a romance with Braddock? At one point, they're fighting, and he says, did you miss me in the bedroom or something? He heavily implies they used to have a relationship. She's 25. Yeah, he's that 30 actress, years older than her. That He's double her age. Well, 25 and 51. Well, that's the other... <laughs> Uh, uh, it is uh, the the three main characters: Braddock, Chloe, and Nathan Drake. So Tom Holland, Sophia Ali, and uh, Tati Gabrielle are the exact same age. Ninety six, ninety seven is when they're all born. And occasionally, the movie will have Tom Holland be like, "Sully, you old man," but then have Mark Wahlberg as Sully be like, "She's my ex." <laughs> like you, desperate old fuck. No, no. Yes. Why is that an implication? It is absolutely what he did and what's so upsetting about that is there are a few times very few where he is okay with it or performs it better and it's the funniest parts like yes the line where he says the man on the app said he'd feed my cat but he's like drunk and he's sleepy on the couch when he says it so he kind of does make himself more the butt of the joke on that line delivery funniest line in the movie yeah the man on the app said he'd feed my cat is the funniest thing that happened in this whole movie. And it was the only time he actually was like, I'm the one who can't understand apps. And I will actually say, probably the only reason he was okay with that line is because later he finds Nate using an app. So he got to be like, I'm young and hip and can still use the apps. Right. So that's my theory of why he actually said that line kind of funny and delivered it well. I buy that. I, what this movie felt like as a whole, and it's so weird... It felt like this movie was Uncharted 5. <laughs> it felt like this movie was the fifth movie the of, like a, a, of a fan favorite series. I'm going to say the opposite. The budget's back up. Uh, it, it feels like the fifth movie of a fan favorite series. And the first four movies were about Sully and starring Mark Wahlberg. And this was supposed to be like the one where they're like, Mark Wahlberg's handing it off to a new young generation mm. of Tom Holland. He is such the lead character, but also aging action star. It feels like Uncharted 5, we're handing it over. Mark Wahlberg in this movie feels exactly the same as Tom Cruise in Mission in Impossible, Impossible with Jeremy Renner. When he was supposed to hand over the franchise to Jeremy Renner, and then he said, no, <laughs> but I'm, this not is, old. I'm not old enough to do it. But this is the first movie. Yeah. It feels Mark Wahlberg is holding such a strong grip on this that honestly, if I wouldn't be surprised if Uncharted 2 was just Sully. Like It feels that, and the fucked up thing is, Tom Holland is an executive producer of this movie. Mark Wahlberg is not. Oh, shit. Like, they had equal billing, which is wild. When, that's the other thing that doesn't make sense. When do you ever see equal billing? These two should not have equal billing when in the, any way. When the final credits came up, and I'm like, whoa, Tom Holland is like the big, he's the lead of the movie, first of all. He's the way more bankable star right now. He definitely wasn't cheap. He's already been Spider-Man for like six years. And Mark Wahlberg had equal billing? What kind of agent do either of you have on a plus or minus scale? Like, Mark Wahlberg's is amazing, and Tom Holland's your agent is shit. And here's the other thing that doesn't make sense to me. I see why, casting-wise, a studio would like this. It is definitely, like, similar to the age difference and how these characters work in the game. But casting-wise, it's like Tom Holland, hot bankable star, worth more money, box office draws, made more box office money than Wahlberg ever has, uh, working all the time, talented actor, but is a young Gen Z celebrity. Mm -hmm. Mark Wahlberg will get the parents, uh, will get the boomers, will get the, like, I remember this guy. I want it. They're, they're targeting two demographics. The guys, the people who don't play video games but want to watch an action movie with an adult in it. That Mark Wahlberg is going to get that generation. But why I think it's a fucking waste to have Mark Wahlberg is 
Antonio Banderas sells to that exact same demographic. You know what I mean? Like the Mark people, of Zorro crowd. People are the Mark of Zorro crowd. People our age, our dad, like that type of like that type of generation would be like, I would go see a movie with Mark Wahlberg or Antonio Banderas. It markets to the same person. Mm-hmm. I don't know why Wahlberg is such a big fucking thing in this. They movie. really could have saved some money by getting a less lesser actor for. Absolutely. For for Sully, yeah. And someone who will do some actual jokes about being old and being and, too old for this shit. Or just, you know, get less Sully. Nathan needs to, Nathan Drake needs to have some kind of a character arc. Hmm. Yeah, somewhat at least. Oh, while we're on Antonio, this is such a small thing. I find the, maybe it's not even small. I find the rating of this movie hilarious. This movie's rated PG, but when they filmed it, I don't think that it was originally going to be PG. And I base this entirely on the tiny little itty bit of blood coming out of the, thr- the, the slit throat of Antonio Banderas on that plane made me laugh so hard. That was a it's very a, small amount of blood. It's a paper cut on his neck. Like, is he faking being dead? Is he like, oh, she only barely nicked me. I'll just pretend I've bled out. There is no blood on this man. Banderas is back in the next one because he was faking it. <laughs> He's got like not even a scar. It wasn't deep enough. <laughs> so this I found hilarious. Yeah, I checked the rating when I got home. Like, oh, rating PG. I think they were going for 13 and then like dropped it down. Maybe. I, I. It feels like they were always going for G or PG for me. Because I think the other thing that was starkly noticeable as someone who had played the video games for this one is that how actively they were avoiding the use of guns in this movie. Because yeah, is he more of a gun guy? He's a gun game? guy. Okay, because it was like the last five minutes, and I'm like, why does he know how to use a gun suddenly? Yeah, like He's been the parkour kicky guy in the, this whole movie. Don't get me wrong. In the video games, he's got grip grip strength. Like, this man knows how to American Ninja Warrior his way up a mountain. Like, that. that is my favorite a, part. a component of this character, and then he gets at the top of the mountain, and there are people with guns, and then he murders them. And... Is much of that problematic, as often is in adventurer movies where they go to exotic locales and the local people are treated just as body bags? Yes, that is problematic. But they were avoiding the concept of a gun, not even like letting him pick one up until the final scene, enough that I was like, oh, you are really, really going out of your way to get a lower rating. That's fair, because as you said, it can it can be very problematic in action movies, but everyone who tries to tries to go near them is someone trying to kill them who has like a lot of money and is not an indigenous person. Like yeah. it's all Antonio Banderas's henchmen. That is, that is true. Whereas the, the video games do have a bigger problem oh, of okay. like every every place is your sandbox. Like you can, mm-hmm. you know, like you can drive you can drive a Jeep through like every home in Barcelona if it means getting away and getting ah. closer to the goal. No, this movie actually I I like that they definitely did a good job of being like we are more respectful of every place we are. To a certain degree, yeah. Even the fact, like, I was even I was even quite happy with the end when the gold all sunk, and I was like, oh, good, the Philippine people get to keep it. That's I guess, great. It's I their guess. gold. Sure. It's from here, I think. I think. I wasn't quite tracking where like the gold where was, taken was taken from taken originally from, or whatever. It's been there for a few hundred years. It wasn't us. <laughs> it wasn't us. Absolutely it wasn't. It wasn't our gold. <laughs> It's better off with the Filipini people. I think that this is one of the movies where Tom Holland could have been British. And <gasps> I know that the video game is an American character and it's a very Indiana Jonesy American adventurer, but I'm like, we're talking about like a private school educated, I'm taking gold from other nations colonizer. It kind of is fine for that to just be a British person. I love that because then he's dude Lara Croft. But also, if Tom Holland is British, it erases all Peter Parker. Yes. Peter yes. Parker's completely gone if he's in his naturally British. Like, I've never seen an interview with Tom Holland and been like, Peter Parker with an accent. Like, Peter Parker's gone. I think I think video game people would have been pissed. Yes, they would have been absolutely pissed. They would have been absolutely furious uh, because they, they love an American adventurer. If you're into an American, anyone who's into an American adventurer loves an American adventurer. But I think it actually would have worked w- way better if he was just... Just British. Just be himself. Just let a, let a, let just a British be boy. Just be a little being be Tom little, Holland. Be a little British. Let Antonio Banderas have a little bit of blood on his neck. Um, one of my last things, uh, it's it's a negative. It's another negative, though, so I'll try to find a positive before we leave, maybe, because this movie was, like, not that bad. Um, absolutely furious about 
the pickpocketing in this movie? People would just steal things magically like I was watching fucking Now You See Me. Oh, I was just about to say it was very Now You See Me with Matt. Yeah. Yeah. Like the scene where Chloe shows up and they are both standing and Tom Holland has a backpack on that zipped clothes. And in broad daylight, she walks up to them. They have their back to a wall. And as she walks away, they're like, she stole the cross out of the zipped up bag on your back when there was no distraction broad daylight like no one walked behind you who was working for her and got it out of the bag like when did she steal that cross i don't think they touched like i don't no, think she was two feet away at all times and you can easily comedically write that where like she goes in and hugs and he's like oh a hug i'm a hugger like 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 she is playing a character or something and so could be like you've never hugged me before uh there's easy ways to do but yeah she was just magically 10 feet away and holding it and the cross is so big Huge. The idea Huge. that you could, in front of both of those men, secretly pull it out of a bag. This is not a tiny little bracelet that was lifted in the opening of the movie. It's bigger than your hand. It is like 10 to 15 pounds of solid gold. Yeah, you would notice your book bag was suddenly much lighter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely so much lighter. And all of the lifts were like this. Like Tom Holland's... The, the bracelet he stole was missing out of his back pocket. And Mark Wahlberg literally never was towards his back. Yeah, I they might have tried to show something on that one. I think the only one they really showed was Holland take the bracelet originally. Yes. That so was they a showed Nathan pull. Drake take the bracelet. Mm -hmm. uh, and, then, and other than that, it was just straight up sorcery. Yeah. And then I think also uh, Nathan Drake, like with the doorman, stole his keys to break into Sully's place. And that was the only like lift that was like, I saw someone do a thing and everything else was now you see me magic right. that's never explained and I really hated it because mm -hmm. I want to be like I want to go on the journey I want to go on the treasure hunt I want to solve the clues I want to be like oh great pickpocket job or like have seen at least when it could have happened the cross one was so infuriating and I can't tell what is a combination of the filmmakers not knowing how to show it or just no one else being as dedicated as Tom Holland is because Tom Holland is someone who came into this role, which granted is a high budget action movie based off of a very, very popular video game series. But he came in and was like, I went to bartending school. I figured out how to do the flips. Like, I've learned an entirely new skill to play this role. I learned pickpocketing. I learned bartending. I learned more of a parkouriness than I usually have. A total, a different Grip physicality, strength. running style, how he jumps over stuff. And I think even some of like the close-ups, it goes from a wide into a close when he takes the bracelet. I'm like, I think you've learned some very like some simple sleight of hand how to pocket something. So I'm like, you came to this role, you learned three new skills. As a human being, you learned three new skills for a role for a mediocre script. And I think like Mark Wahlberg was like, just say I took the fucking bracelet. Like, who cares? <laughs> you say I like, you know, you he know? had a bracelet. Now you show me with the bracelet. I have the bracelet. Magic of cinema. I'm just as good at Tom Holland as all these things. Yeah. No, I don't need to. Sh oh, no, you're not going to see me make the drink. I'm going to hand it to you, and you're going to be like, oh, that's but, as delicious as Tom Holland's drink. I did as good as him, but without learning the thing. That's cinema. You show it. So I, I feel like there is very much that kind of a, a vibe around it, around it a little bit. That like, and granted, you know, not every actor has to learn a million new skill sets for for a role. But I like that Tom Holland does it seemingly in an unpretentious way, which is actually rare uh, for an actor who does unnecessary things for a role. Yeah, he's not Tom cruising it where he's like, I learned one giant stunt for every movie I learned how to fly a jet plane. He's yeah. just like, I bartended for a little while. That was fun. Yeah, I, I'm committed to the role. I work really hard. I love Tom Holland. Yeah, he. this movie would have been an absolute flop without him. Yeah, I I, I completely agree. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's all I wanted to say about Uncharted. How are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. That's most of my uh, the charts I had about this movie. I, I graphed them all out, much Excellent. like the movie did with the three charts. Love to hear it. Uh, well, let's go in for the close. Let's ask the final question of what would you change? So now that we've discussed everything we discussed, what would you change about this movie? But before we do ask that final question, we will remind you, as we do every week, to please take a moment and follow, subscribe, rate, review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, uh, by leaving a, uh, a rating and a review, if your podcatcher allows you, it helps us move up the charts. It helps us get recommended to new listeners. When new people find the podcast, they check those reviews. And if there's positive ones there, it makes it more likely that new people will actually hit download and start listening to us. 
So if you're on Apple Podcasts, leave a rating and review. You can also leave uh, just a rating on Spotify. You can leave a rating and review on Podcast Addict as well. So check to see wherever you're listening to this if you can leave a rating and review. And if you can, do it. Do it, guys. We need your help. We want to be more famous. And we want you to be the ones to cause it to happen. I'm just going to be totally bare and truth about our motivations here. Yeah, I thought it was always pretty obvious. I don't think I've ever just said it like that. It feels kind of good. I don't think we've ever said it. But yeah, full transparency. Full transparency. You doing this increases our success. And by succeeding at this, that brings us happiness in life as well as monetary gain. I feel That's very full fulfilled. That's full transparency. Full, full, full transparency. transparency. I would like to feel more fulfilled with more reviews. Yeah. Um, I'd really appreciate it personally. Andrew would too. Yeah. Uh, and you guys are great. Everyone who has left reviews, adore you guys. Transparency is awesome. We will never lie to you. I love it. Uh, and here's uh, another transparent thing is that you can check us out over on Patreon. We have a Patreon page, which if you're familiar with the platform, it's a monthly subscription service where you can subscribe to online content creators and get some exclusive bonuses for doing it. So full transparency, you support us monetarily, which allows us to dedicate more of our time to creating additional content, which will then go to the people who support us monetarily, which is you. So what that means is if you head over to the Patreon, if you sign up at the hero level, which is 10 bucks a month, and you can cancel or change it at any given time, you're not locked into anything, you can do just this month and then shut it down if you need to, then you get the exclusive episode of the podcast that we do every single month just for Patreon. This month we did The Legend of Vox Machina season one. Whole season, and also if you sign up for a year, you can get a month free. Mm. So if you're, if you're enjoying your content and you know you're sticking around, Get a free month when you sign up for a year. And you always get that little extra. This full transparency, this is just an exchange of goods for services. Yeah. That... You give us some goods, we give you some services. Or do we have the goods? Um, is it goods for goods? No. I guess for en- entertainment, would it be a good or service? I'm ca- I would call it a service. Okay. They I would get call entertainment an entertainment a service. I don't know. You, get, you have a file a, of an extra episode? You actually get all of the back episodes as so, well. So many files. So if you sign up so at the, the Hero level, you get 75 now exclusive Patreon Ooh, episodes. Exactly 75, huh? 75, yes. You hit the number. So uh, check it out over at patreon.com slash from superheroes. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash from superheroes. Check it out. Have a look. Do what you can. If it's in the budget, if it's not, we understand. But it all goes right to us and supports us. Thank you so much, all of our current patrons and Thank previous you. patrons. You're all great. You're all great. And now, let's ask the final question. What would you change? Diana, what would you change? This is tough. I actually have so many. And I think if they all were combined, this movie would be great. So I'm going to I'm gonna only pick a few. I'm not going to go through them all. What are my favorites? Um, my favorite is my Antonio Banderas one, which I, I hinted at earlier. Um, so... I would not kill him. I liked Antonio Banderas more than I liked Braddock. I think we'd keep him around. Um, what I would like, uh, what I would have liked is his dad does cut him off. His dad is not killed. So the money he has is all the money he has now. Like, whatever's in his bank account. He's got no more trust fund money. Oh. Yeah, his dad gives all their business money away. And he's only got, like, whatever's in his personal checking account. So he's funded this mission. And that's all the money he has. So this mission is all or nothing for Antonio Banderas. And I just wanted to see him freaking out as the ships are destroyed and the gold's going in the ocean. And he's just like, that's every dollar I had. I just want to see this broken jerk of a man lose everything. And like, that's why the stakes are so high for him. He's got no other money. This is his only chance to rebuild his empire. And this is why I don't kill Antonio Banderas. Mm. This is my biggest change. I like it. As soon as as soon as you describe it, the motivation is so clear to me. I'm like, as soon as you said the sentence cut off from his father's money, I'm like, yes. Which they said in close... the movie was gonna happen. I didn't understand mm-hmm. why all the like why do you even care, Antonio Banderas? You're still super rich. You killed your dad. Yeah. You kept all the money. Um, with that, since he is like cut off and poor now, he's actually not trying to buy the cross in the first scene. He's also trying to steal it. These are two thefts happening at once. Okay. So just a little fun for double thieving because him just bidding on it's boring. I agree. So like they're both just trying to steal it because he's trying to save as much money as he can. He's on a, a limited budget at this point. <laughs> Um, And then my other biggest change is I do want to give Nate more of an arc or at least a driving force. So I'm actually going to say Sully sincerely doesn't know what happened to Sam 
they got separated in the wood in the jungle at some point and he didn't just leave them to die because then I don't need Sully to have an arc I don't care about Sully um so Nate sincerely doesn't know what happened to Sam and neither does Sully but he does know that either Antonio Banderas or Braddock has one of Sam's postcards Oh, okay. So he thinks, so like, they know what happened to him. And he's kind of just driving forces, like, find out what happened to his brother from them. Mm. And because of the postcard, they know about Nate. And they're kind of crossing paths that way. Okay. So I've changed a lot of things, but I really like all of them. I think it really builds on each other. But that was a lot to take in, I know. It was quite a few things, but I'm with it. I'm, I, I'm I worked with hard it. on it. I'm with it. I like it. I think that these are all all great ideas. Mm -hmm. I uh, yeah, definitely with you on the Banderas thing, and I agree that Nathan has to be a more active protagonist in his own story. Yes. So like, yeah, I, I would give it more of Nate gets an arc rather than Sully. Of Nate's just trying to find out what happened, and Sully isn't hiding it. He sincerely doesn't know. Yeah, I think that that's way better. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. so those are my big changes. My Antonio is my favorite. I'm just picturing like Antonio Banderas watching the ships get destroyed and just crying, <laughs> just like genuine tears coming down his face as he freaks out about the billions of dollars. And I think that would be very fun. Uh, Andrew, what are your changes? Change. I had changes. Uh, you I'm had changes, and that's fine. Sometimes we have multiple. I'm gonna stick. I'm gonna stick with one this week. Usually, I'm the one with the multiples. Uh, but I, uh, I'm gonna say that we recast Sully. Oh, cool. Mark yeah, Wahlberg yeah. is out, and I honestly think that Sully should be played by Nolan North. <gasps> who was the voice of Drake in the video yeah. games. And for those of you, maybe you didn't play the video games or you, you might not know the face of Nolan North, he was the guy on the beach. It was like a little, mm -hmm. like, a little, uh, I guess, Easter egg or cameo. But, you know, and that was fun and nice that I'm like, oh, he's part of it. And, like, you know, he's such a big factor and such a, such a big part of this role in this universe and part of the reason why it's successful enough to get a movie. But if we're doing this what feels like Uncharted 5. If we're yeah, doing what feels like Sully is the legacy character who is handing it off, if Nolan is okay with handing it off to a younger generation, which clearly he is to do the cameo and be a part of this, and obviously, like, even in the first Uncharted video game, Nathan Drake's a bit of an older character, so this is a different interpretation of it. Make Nolan the Sully character. And he's about that age, and Nolan is someone who, while a, a very accomplished and award-winning voice actor, he also does on-camera stuff, not at anywhere near the frequency, and now he's at legend status of voice acting, but let him be the, the grumpy, curmudgeonly old guy who's passing the torch to a younger generation. It adds a meta-narrative, and he's maybe not a known, famous face actor, but we don't need that in that role because Bandera suits uh, selling tickets to older generation. Holland sells the tickets to the younger generation. He gets the video game enthusiasts in and it allows this nice passing of the torch. And then it's also kind of like less upsetting if Sully has more of a role. I love this. Like, because, but especially because Nolan North has such a better attitude about himself than Mark Wahlberg, he absolutely would be like, oh, bad ankle, no, oh, I can't. He yeah. would be so great in the Sully role. And a man who has done much fewer on-camera roles than voice acting, but has never been an action star. Like, Mark Wahlberg has been an action star. He's like, I've worked with stunt choreographers, I've done this stuff, and he wants to do it, obviously. Whereas Nolan North would be a guy who's like, I'm an out of shape voice actor. And I'm gonna I, I, fly the helicopter. I don't even want to say out of shape. That's that comes off as rude. But I'm not a. I've never I'm not had, a jacked up action hero. I'm not getting the shirtless ab scene. Yes. That that Tom Holland got, and he would be like, "Yeah, let me fly the helicopter. I'll fly a helicopter. I'll smoke a cigar and fly a helicopter, and not know how apps work. Yes, I'll have a sense of humor about myself. I think that that would mean a lot to fans of the video games. I think it would be a great role for Nolan North and would work way better with what the writing of this movie is. I really like that because I think that's exactly where we are culturally with these movies right now, like with like all movies. Like we just had multiple Spider-Verses, The Flash is going to have like old Batman, new Batman, multiverses, like it feels like the Uncharted multiverse in that way. Yeah. If Nolan North is playing Sully. Yeah, somewhere if, in between a multiverse and like a meta narrative yeah. kind of a thing. A like, you've gotten older over the course of playing this role, we're handing it to a younger actor, and now you're cast as the older character within that story. Yeah, it's like every CW show that casts the old character to play the current character's mom or dad. Like, yeah. 
old Superman plays Supergirl's dad. Old Supergirl plays Supergirl's mom. Uh, old Flash plays Flash's dad. Like, yes. CW does it with ev- literally every single show that has an older person who's played the character before. Right. <laughs> Let's bring in the legacy actor as na- and recast them as, as the, the, old, the mentor as the or, or, or dad. Yeah. Or, or mom or dad. So, and, yeah. And it absolutely. allows that actor to, and it's also, I think, just smart from a marketing perspective because, like, it allows that actor to have access to a new generation. So it also it gives your old defined property access to a younger audience, which also gives the younger audience a reason to explore older properties that they might not be familiar with. You know, like there might be younger people seeing the Uncharted movie who maybe haven't played all of the games, who might go back and purchase the games if the original guy is in the movie to have that meta narrative to look up. Oh, so I it, like that you went with younger because I was thinking if an older viewer really loves Nolan North's performance, they might go try the I, games for the first time. It works both ways, mm-hmm. yeah. And and especially for something like this where like it would, I think, be financially intelligent but also very creatively rewarding and warm and sweet as well. Mm-hmm. What I like about these changes is they work so well because if Nolan North is Sully, Antonio Banderas needs a bigger role, and then mm. he lives in my version. Love it. So he lives, he's got no money, and uh, Nolan North is Sully. Love it. I think that's a fun movie. <laughs> that is a, yeah, a, a one recasting and a slight rewrite, and it's a fucking bang, it, like, you know, a banger of a step up, yeah. Love it. That's pretty good. I think we did a great job tonight. I think we really did it. We earned this. We earned it. We did it. You're welcome, movie that doesn't exist. It exists in, in our, our hearts. In our imagination. It exists in our hearts and minds. That's how I'll remember this film ended. Huzzah. Uh, well, that's going to be it for this week for talking about Uncharted. We are going to be back next week. Next week on the podcast, we are going to be talking about The Batman, the new take on Batman. The Batman, you guys. He's The Batman. Don't mess up that title. So we'll be back next week to talk about The Batman. If you want more of us, you can find our Patreon episode for the month, uh, which is on season one of Legend of Vox Machina. That's over at patreon.com slash from superheroes. And in the meantime, if you want to get a hold of us, you can reach me on Twitter at Ivamy, I-V-I-M-E-Y. Oh, you want me? I'm at Words of Diana. And us, you can find us at from superheroes. And we'll talk to you all next week. Bye. Bye.